Canterbury. Call um, Andrew Williams. Thank you, Mr Chair. Take a call on behalf of New Zealand First on this very important bill involving environment, Canterbury and the temporary commissioners in particular. And in doing so, I'd like to refer to the regulatory impact statement. And this was, uh, of course, published by the Department of Internal Affairs and also by the Ministry for the Environment jointly. And for those uh, New Zealanders out there who may be uh, watching this broadcast uh, and who perhaps are not aware of the background to uh, preparation of papers for Parliament, uh, these reports are, are prepared by officials uh, to give guidance to, to government and to the Parliament as to the recommendations of the various ministries uh, in terms of a particular bill. And I would remind the Minister, the new incoming Minister, and I would remind the members of the National Party sitting on the other benches, uh, of what the regulatory impact report did state in regards to the Commissioners for Environment Canterbury. It suggested that there were five options. Option one was legislation to establish a transitional mixed governing body for ECAN with provision for Minister of Local Government to review the arrangements by 2017. That was option one. Option two was legislation to establish a permanent mixed governing body for ECAN. Option three was legislation to extend or entrench a governing body for ECAN of appointed commissioners. Option four was the status quo, returning to a fully elected governing body under the Local Government Act 2002 and Local Electoral Act 2001. And option five was ministerial direction for an independent review of matters relating to ECAN governance. In this particular instance, the officials of both those ministries recommended that option one be the preferred option adopted by government and by this parliament. And option one, I will remind you, was that legislation be to establish a transitional mixed governing body for ECAN. In other words, a transition back to elected representation. And in that regards, the commissioners themselves under Dame Margaret Baisley, uh, probably the most experienced public servant in this country, uh, who's been who has led many uh, government departments, uh, and has now a damehood, obviously, for her services to the public service. She and her commissioners also recommended that there be a tra transition back to uh, democratic representation in a mixed governing body. Uh, and so over a period of a year or two, that you would have a mixture of the existing commissioners and, and elected uh, representatives uh, with the intention to then fully uh, return to an elected body in due course. That was a sensible solution for everyone. We could all probably live with that. We would say it's not ideal, it's not returning to full democracy, but it is a step in the right direction. And I think the Honourable Nick Smith uh, would have been very supportive of that, and he gave indications certainly in that direction. And, and it seemed that that was a fair way to go, so that uh, everyone would basically get a reasonable uh, shake of the stick out of this whole situation. And we would have a situation where those commissioners who have sat there for a couple of years now could have helped with the newly elected people to move back into the transition and help that handover process. That often happens in all sorts of corporate situations, in all sorts of governance situations, and that is a common model, and certainly that would have been a workable model. It was very interesting that, that so all the advisers were suggesting this, the ministries, the commissioners, everyone was advising this, seemed sensible, but what does this government do? It does exactly the opposite. It just says, no, we're not going to have elections. We're just going to leave the commissioners there and we're going to extend this from 2013 elections out to 2016 and we're going to ignore all the advice that we had. A little bit like they ignored the advice in Auckland where the Royal Commission had wrote an 800-page report and they threw that out and eight, eight days later Rodney Hyde came out with a 34-page with a report which did exactly the opposite to what the Royal Commission was recommending. So that's, the, that's sort of the operas. Uh, modus operandi of this government that you, you, you just ignore the advice, you just ignore the, 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 you know, the, the good expertise that you have around you from the ministries and from the officials, from the likes of Dame Margaret Basie, you just ignore it and you just go with how you want to do because that's what you do, when you're a money sort of wheeling dealer and you're, you know, you, you're just trading things around the place and just throwing things in the pot like Sky City and all sorts of other things you just throw things in the pot you run with the hounds, run with the hares, and then you just sort of try and, you know, push your way through and forget the actual democratic consequences. And it's very interesting that this government uh, is working that way. Interestingly, too, that the Christchurch City Council itself recommended that there be a return to local democracy in Canterbury. So there's 
Mayor Bob Parker and his council saying, no, it's time that we, you know, they weren't, they, Mr Chair, Mr Chair, Mr Chair. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I'm pleased to take a call uh, on this bill and part two of this bill. Mr Chairman, I wonder just how...